Good day, Internet, and today I'm going to show you how to make a basic maze game. So, to start, we will go into Blender Game, X to delete our default cube, and add a mesh plane. Now, we are going to delete our light and move our camera to layer 2, M2. And now, I'm going to view from the top and right click my plane, size it up, 30. That should be pretty good. So now tab into edit mode, hit W, subdivide, and go over to number of cuts and we want it to be 12. Now with Blender, you can't just right click up to 12 or hit enter up to 12. You have to manually type into 12 because it stops at 10 otherwise. So now, to make the walls for me, just go into face selection mode, hit A to deselect, and hit C for the selection tool to pop up. And I'm just going to choose three walls, or three sides of my sphere, not sphere, uh, plane, to have as boundary walls. And then on the fourth side, I'm going to choose all but two and select those to be another boundary wall. And now, I'm just going to make a nice basic maze for level one. You can make an advanced as, an advanced as maze as you'd like, but for me, I'm just gonna make it nice and easy to get the game started for my players. And if you accidentally select too much, just use middle mouse button to deselect it. So now that we have that, we want to hit E5. And now we have our walls. Nice looking walls, aren't they? So, don't type back into object mode yet, because what we want to do is add colors to our maze. So what I'm going to do is hit new, and then hit the plus button, and hit new again. Now the second material will be the top of our walls. So just I'm going to make the top of my walls black, and then I'm going to assign it. And then the first color, oh, I think I'm going to choose blue. But if you want a different color, that's perfectly fine. So I have blue. Uh, maybe lighten it up a bit, though. There we go. It's a nice blue color. And now go ahead and hit tab into object mode. So now we have our maze. So we need a character. So I'm going to hit shift A mesh cube and bring it over to the beginning of my maze. And then bring it up. It can be floating. We'll fix that later. So, there we go. We have our character. I'm going to give it a nice color. I'm going to make it a red color. So now I have my character. Go over to the Physics tab and make your character dynamic. And make sure Actor is checked. That is very important. Actor is checked. So now that we have our character, we're going to give our character movement. So go ahead and bring this bar up, and then change it to the logic editor. And for now, we can just slide this off to the side, because we don't need that. So, we're going to add four keyboard sensors. Three, four. And we're going to add four motion actuators. Alright, so now we are going to make, we name them the key that we are going to be clicking. So this is going to be, for me, WASD is what I'm going to use for movement. If you want to use arrow keys, that's fine. But, so I'm going to name that one W, and then where it says key, you click and hit W. So now we can just minimize that, and we know it's the W key. What we're going to do is just connect these two. 
and it automatically brings up the AND controller. If you want a different one, you can change it, but in this tutorial, you just need the AND. And we're going to change it so that on the Y axis, that's the green one here, we move forward. So Y, and we're going to test this, so hit P, and then hit W, and we move forward. So, that's good. Now we can just minimize this. And on this one, S, S, and since on W it was positive Y, we need negative, oh, not rotation, negative Y on location. And on this one we want A to turn left, and bring it over, and on this one we want rotation on the Z. And I think it's positive one, but we may have to change that later. We'll test in just a second. And on this one we want D. And we want rotation on the negative Z. And connect these. So, now we should have our movements. Let's see how well they work. Yep, works pretty good. Alright, so, now that we have that, we can bring our camera in. So right-click camera, move to layer 1. Now go ahead and hit view camera. And then go up here, hit the plus button. Oh, that's way too big. And change the rotation on the X to 0 and on the Z to 0. And then go ahead on location, change Z to 20. And hit G, Y, G, Y, and then G, X. And just move it so that it's directly centered above your character. So that seems to be pretty good. So now, your camera is selected, shift, right click, your player and hit control P. Now let's make sure we got this parented correctly. You hit right click on your cube, hit G, and the camera moves with the cube. So now if we hit P and play it, we have a nice moving camera with our cube. And hit escape to get out. Alright, so now we're going to add it, add in second levels. So we'll go ahead and hit the plus button up here and hit full copy. I'm just going to name this level 2. Now we'll go back to our scene and we'll name this level 1. So now, to change levels, we shift add a cube and bring it to the end of our maze. Now in this you need it so that the bottom is sticking out a bit and then size it up on the X. So S X. So it goes through both of those walls without going through the next one over. And then in physics we need actor ghost or no not ghost actor invisible. And here's an important part. We need a property on this wall. And we will name it wall, just to make things easy. That's all you need to do with that right there. So now, go back over to your cube. Right click on the cube. Go ahead and shrink that. And now we need a collision sensor. And this is where the property name is important. Because it must be the exact same name. So. If you put wall, go ahead and type in wall, and then hit this button, which is true trigger pulse, which means it's always ready to activate. And now, we need a scene. And go ahead and connect, and change this to 
set scene level two. Go ahead and minimize these. And there's one more thing we're going to do. We're going to right click the camera, add an always, and we're going to need another scene, but we're just going to set it as the active camera. So, uh, not, no, not set scene, set camera, and go ahead and leave that blank. So now, whenever we play it, it'll automatically set the camera as the active camera. So now if we play our game, this is a very basic maze game. If you want to make your maze more advanced, that is up to you. And probably in later tutorials, I will show how to add enemies and possibly add weapons to make this a more advanced game. So, let's see, almost there. Down the last stretch. And now I hit my invisible cube, and it set it to level 2, which in this case is the same as level 1. So, there you have it. That is how you make a basic maze game. In the second tutorial, I will go over some more advanced functions along with more logic bricks. Thank you for watching.